When it comes to pseudo-legendary Pokemon, Gudra's never really been top tier. But with its insane base 150 special defense, this thing can be a pretty sweet special tank. We can make it even bulkier by running Assault Vest, which boosts its special defense by 1.5 times at the cost of only being able to use attacking moves. And it can also have great synergy on teams being able to switch into grass moves with its Sap Zipper ability. And with coverage moves like Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam, we can actually make use of the solid 110 special attack. We throw in Dragon Tail to force switches and limit setups, and Gudra's a really fun tank. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a super good match for you. And if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. It'll only take you a second. I'm on my way to 300k, and it would really be appreciated. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so right off the bat, my opponent is going to straight up lead off with the Blood Moon Ursaluna. It's like, damn, at least buy me dinner first, bro. Jesus. Well, I lead off with the Cleaver, and I definitely do not want to poke the bear here, quite literally. Uh, I'm here to get up the Stone Axe and set up the Stealth Rock, however... Cleaver pretty much wants nothing to do with that, so I decided to go for the U-turn instead and go into something more fit to handle the special attacks. Now, of course, I do have the gooeyest McGooberton in the Gudra, and I should be able to take an attack with this thing with the Assault Vest. Coming from, like, the scariest special attacker in the game, we can see the thick thighs are able to take it. We thick like store-bought gravy, and we can take that Earth Power no problem. Um, and it actually even is Life Orb, too, so that damage is honestly insane. Stab with the Life Orb. I'm just going to go for the Ice Beam, thinking maybe they stay in here, go for a Blood Moon. Uh, however, they are going to end up switching that thing out. So, I have the Bolt Beam coverage on the Gudra. This thing is a really fun set with the Assault Vest. It actually gets really good coverage um, as they end up going into the Gyarados. I'm honestly fine with the Gyarados switch in because I should for sure be able to take an attack, and it seems likely that this thing probably wants to try to set up some Dragon Dances, and Gudra is going to basically punish that uh, with that Thunderbolt. So, I'm over here just dripping my goo all over the battlefield, having a good time. I figure I might as well just stay in here, go for that T-Bolt. Um, and they actually end up going for the Thunder Wave, which is unfortunate. You know, Gudra's not fast, but uh, the chance for the full para is super annoying. And as you can see, I do, in fact, get fully paralyzed. So, that is not ideal. However, again, I, I know that this Gyarados can't really touch me unless it has uh, at least a Dragon Dance, and Earthquake is probably its best answer. Uh, barring like an Ice Fang, which I should be able to take one. So they do in fact stay in, go for that Earthquake. Uh, physical side does do a decent bit to the Gudra. However, I do break through the Paralysis here. And the Thunderbolt is going to knock it uh, down to red. So not quite going to grab a kill there. However, now the Gyarados doesn't have a whole lot to do right, for the remainder of the match. Especially if I can get Stealth Rock in. Uh, they can't even switch this thing back in. So here I decide to go for the Draco Meteor. And luckily for me, they actually end up switching. And they're going to go right back into the Blood Moon. So... This thing thinks he can come in being ground type, switching in onto an, uh, a Thunderbolt for free. However, instead I just drop a Draco right on his ass, and that actually ends up taking care of this thing. Uh, and that is the true power of Gudra. We're out here taking hits, throwing throwing meteors at people, just having a time. So, uh, that thing is out of the way. That's probably the scariest Pokemon on their team. And now they decide to go into Torterra. So I'm thinking, ooh, this is perfect. Pretty much any time you see Torterra... Uh, it is going to go for either an Ice or Fire Terra to negate the super effective Ice Beams, and then go for a Shell Smash. So, they do actually commit the Terra, they're going to go into that Ice type, and me predicting the Shell Smash, I'm going to end up going for a Dragon Tail and get his ass out of here. I'm really hoping that I don't get the fully paralyzed here, because it would just be so sweet to just stop this thing in its tracks. So, it does go ahead and smash the old Shell to bits, and honestly a Torterra with the speed and attack boost is relatively scary. Now, I do have the Cleaver in the back who is faster with the Scarf, but Slime Shady actually just even gets the full para, so that is unfortunate. Now this thing has the firepower to take out the Gudra, and looking at my team, I don't have a lot to deal with this thing. But, it turns out they actually end up going for another Shell Smash. Now that does guarantee that pretty much this thing will be faster than my entire team, and can Oko literally everything. So I'm hoping, please, Gudra, do not get fully paralyzed here, I absolutely beg of you. Uh, and as it turns out, we do hit him with the old thickest tail in the game. Uh, the Dragon Tail is going to get his ass out of here, gets rid of those boosts, and brings in Golem. So, the greed allows Gudra to show exactly what we're made of here, and with Golem in, I, I don't really have a reason to conserve this thing at this point. I've already done uh, enough, you know, stirring up the team, breaking down some stuff, so I decide to let it go down. They do finish me with the Rock Blast. Uh, I, I thought there was an off chance they end up going for the Stealth Rock there, but they just wanted the Gudra gone because I'm just being annoying out here, so... Now here's the plan. I'm going to end up going into the Tropius. On this switch, I know we saw the Rock Blast. However, my plan is to go for a Substitute. And if I get hit a few times after the Substitute, I should actually even be able to live and then get knocked down to my Salic Berry. 
Or at least that's what I think. So they go for that Rock Blast and actually end up missing, which is wildly unfortunate because now I got myself a free bean bag, and I just go right for a nice little leaf blade here, which I figure knocks him down to sturdy, but it actually somehow doesn't. Tropius uh, is out here with some weak-ass leaves. But they go for another Rock Blast and literally miss again, which I don't even know the odds of that, but you hate to see it. So you know, I figure I'm going to go for the Sword Stance this time, thinking, okay, I can actually maybe make my plan work. If I get the Sword Stance up here, Rock Blast hits me like two or three times, or three times after the Substitute breaks. I should be in range for the Salic Berry. So they do connect on a Rock Blast here, and this is when I realized I, I kind of fucked up. This is actually max attack and speed Tropius uh, instead of max HP. And yeah, I just straight up go down uh, to the, th <laughs> the three Rock Blasts. So uh, I do eat my Salic Berry, however. We got a nice little pause for a little lunch break, but yeah, one more Rock Blast just takes care of the Tropius. I've been messing around with a couple different sets on this thing, um, and yeah, this one is just max attack and speed. I don't have the bulk to be able to take that, and I'm just gonna die. So, yeah, that's fine. Honestly, Tropius didn't really do too much for me in this match anyway, so it was worth it for me to just give it the old college try, and yeah, so at least on the revenge switch, I can now go into the cleaver. And the good news is, a stone axe, they're still in range to die from it, but I can also just essentially set up my stealth rock, and now when Gyarados switches in, that thing is gonna die, and just overall having the rocks up uh, is super nice, because they have some mons in the back that's gonna get some solid chip on, and we take care of the golem, but, now they're going to go into Coma O, and again, Coma O is also one of the scarier mons to play against these days. That's because of this thing's ability to set up is honestly game-breaking. But, uh, I figure my best answer is just to go into Empoleon here um, and see what this thing wants to do. I essentially, I need to conserve Cleaver. I think with the Choice Scarf is kind of my best attacker at this point. I can outspeed everything, um, but being locked into the Stone Axe is not ideal here. So, I bring in Empoleon, and his ass just gets sent to the Shadow Realm by... A focus blast and you know they, they missed rock blasts out here but apparently focus blast is just all accurate so that is unfortunate but um, you know lo losing Empoleon not ideal however now I can just go into a free switch and I'm realizing that I do not have a lot of answers to this damn coma oh uh, I bring in Rotom heat and I go for the overheat instead of the shadow ball the reason being is because if this thing is bulletproof it actually is not affected by shadow ball so that kind of sucks but they do actually end up missing a focus blast which you know, is to be expected. However, my overheat did not quite do enough damage, and I know that Rotom can, like, take an attack from this thing, but I just can't hit it that hard in return. So I decided to go for the Volt Switch. Um, actually end up grabbing a cheeky little critical hit. It does actually end up knocking it down to a Citrus Berry, however, and this thing is still way too damn healthy. Essentially, my plan is I need to whittle this thing down to the point where at least Choice Scarf Cleaver can come in, outspeed, and take care of it. I just don't have a lot of coverage for it. So... Uh, with my three Pokemon left, I essentially just decide to switch into Furret. Now, this is Tidy Up Last Resort Furret, and this thing has no business being in against fucking Metal Armored Dragon, as they actually end up going for that Clangorous Soul, and things are getting out of hand here, as that gives it a nice little boost in every single stat, and Furret is forced to go for a Tidy Up before I can even click uh, the Last Resort. So, I mean, I go ahead and go for it. They do connect on another Focus Blast. Dude, Buddy's just out here rolling the dice. And down goes the Furret. So, Furret doing what he does best. And <laughs> now I have, you know, the two Pokemon left. So, I decide, you know what, I'm actually just going to go into Cleaver. And if my calculations are correct, if I go for the Terra Bug, uh, with the Sharpness Boosted X Scissor, at this range, I should be able to grab a kill. And Cleaver is essentially my win condition at this point. Again, they have three Pokemon left after this, one of them being Gyarados that switches in and dies. Um, and so the plan is, you know, I can go for this Terra bug, commit that Terra, finish this thing off with an X Scissor, and then see what their answer is going to be to the Cleaver. So the X Scissor is going to be enough to take care of the Coma O, luckily. And Cleaver is being the real goat right now. So they're down to three Pokemon left. They have the Torterra, who is uh, Terra into the Ice type. They have the Hisuian Braviary and a Gyarados who dies on Switch in. So they decide to go into the Braviary here now. I'm thinking to myself, we see no Stealth Rock damage, it means it's heavy duty boots. I'm thinking they probably go for something like an Air Slash here, so I decided to switch into the Rotom, thinking I can take an attack from this thing easy, I could potentially Volt Switch or go for an Overheat, but they actually end up going for the Esper Wing and get a critical hit. With that speed boost, that is real bad news, because if they get one more speed boost, it now is going to outspeed the Choice Scarf Cleaver. And I should have just stayed in and gone for that uh, that Terra boosted X Scissor, um, but it was only like a it was less than a 10% chance for it to kill. So I figured this is my safest play. But now 
I am facing the wrath of a Braviary who is now faster uh, than my Choice Scarf user. So, at this point at least, now I can get in Cleaver to change my move over to Stone Axe, and that definitely kills the Braviary and the Torterra once it switches in, and Air Slash only has a 5% chance to Oko me, but they actually have Hurricane instead, and that is going to connect and takes care of the Cleaver. So... That is going to be the end of the match, and honestly, kind of a crazy ending. If they were carrying Air Slash instead, it would have been uh, a really good chance for me to win the game. But they do hit that Hurricane, um, and they, they probably deserve that hit after the Rock Blast misses. But, you know, it is what it is. Still a really fun game, and we just we love a close one. So that's sometimes the way it goes. Misplays on my end, so they do happen. But uh, still, I'm proud of the match, and thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support, and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.